guys, welcome back. So today's video is a collaboration video with Ladies Who Collab on Facebook, and this is the products that everyone else loves, but for some reason, they I just don't love them. So maybe they just didn't wow me, so perhaps they're just okay. Maybe they are awful for my skin type, my skin tone. Um, for some reason, I just didn't like them, but I hear them raved about time and time again on YouTube. So I have about 10 products to show you. Um, let's go ahead and get started. Okay, one product that people seem to love are the NYX Soft Matte Lip Creams. Um, this is in the shade Prague, and I hate this formula. It is dry, it doesn't go on nice and smooth, it goes on like kind of patchy on me. And no matter what I do, I always feel like I have to put a gloss on top of these. And at that point, why am I wearing a soft matte lip cream Why I'm not just wearing lip gloss? You know what I'm saying? If I'm going to get a matte finish and it looks good, okay, fine. But if not, I might as well just wear a gloss and be comfortable and not have to use two products. I can just use one. Another product that I don't love but I've heard people talk about is the Laura Mercier Silk Cream Moisturizing Photo Finish Foundation. This is in the shade Bamboo Beige. Um, I've tried two different shades, so I don't think it's a color match thing. Um, this is a product that every time I go to Sephora and I tell them I have dry-ish skin, which I don't anymore, but when I did, they would tell me, oh, you need to try the Laura Mercier one. And they say it's full coverage and it's really good. This thing is dry. Like, I mean, I don't even have dry skin anymore, and I cannot wear this. I think it looks hideous on my skin, and it's expensive. I think it's like $40, and I'm very disappointed. It's too late for me to return it by now. I probably had it a year. It's not a big deal, but I just want to put it out there that everybody else loves that foundation, and I think it is just like the worst foundation, almost. I have another foundation in this bag, and I'll show you that in a minute, but not my thing. I'm going to count this as one product. Um, I recently put in an order, well not recently, like last year, end of last year, put in an order with House of Lashes on online and I got some several pairs of lashes and the eyelash adhesive from them. I do not like these. I got the House of Lashes Iconic, I got these Noir Fairy, I got three pairs of lashes and two different kinds of lash glue, the white one and the black one. The band on these lashes is just so thick that I can't even, um, like, they just feel so heavy on my eyes. And I can get a beautiful finish with lashes that are like a fifth of the price from Ardell at the drugstore. And these were not cheap. I want to say they were around $20 a pair or $15 a pair or something. And I didn't even like them as much. And the glue, I don't know if it's the glue or the lashes. I have my duo lash glue that I like that I did try the lashes with and it still happened. So maybe it's not the glue. The glue was just okay, but not worth paying double the price of Ardell. And also I kept finding myself getting like that irritated outer eye thing where like, I don't know if it was the lash band poking me, but every time I wore them, I would get um, like a sore outer eye, it would wear off my makeup, my eyes would water and I'd be red right there every time. So not worth it and I would definitely not recommend getting House of Lashes um, products but that's just me. Um, the next lash company besides Ardell that I want to try is the, um, I did try Lotus Lashes by the way, but the next lash company I want to try maybe are some of the Huda, Huda, Beauty, Huda Beauty ones at Sephora or um, What's the other brand that they sell at Sephora now? Velour. The Velour lashes. I'd be willing to try those. I'm not like dead set against mink lashes or anything. I just didn't like these. And everyone talks about the Iconics like they were just amazing. And they're just so heavy and uncomfortable and hard to camouflage, hard to make them look natural. Not for me. Another product, or I guess I could say two products that I don't like that I don't know why everybody else does the Revlon Color Stay foundation. I have the liquid and the cream that's in like the tub and this one they're both in I think sand beige or something like that 180 sand beige. I just find this is the one for normal to dry skin. I find this so dry. I get cake face instantly when I use these foundations and people have been talking about them for years. Not as much anymore but like when I first started my YouTube channel the Revlon Color Stay whipped and this one were like amazing, like talked up all the time. And I bought them both. And you know, that's like a $20 investment. And I was like really disappointed. So at the time I thought, oh, this is what full coverage foundation is supposed to do. Because I was new to makeup and I just thought, well, full coverage means cake face. No, it doesn't. It does not have to mean cake face. I have a full coverage foundation on now, but I don't have cake face. 
there's a difference and I didn't like that. One more foundation which is on the opposite end of the spectrum. This is the L'Oreal uh, Infallible Pro Glow Foundation. I have it in the shade 205 Natural Beige. So I love the L'Oreal Infallible Pro Matte and I don't always like matte finish things but I really do like that foundation. I have it in three colors now because I just like it that much. So I thought, oh the Pro Glow is going to be amazing. It's going to have that same full coverage but with a slightly dewy finish. And my skin is not as matte as it used to be, I will admit. So if you see my natural oils showing through, it may not be this foundation. It could just be that my skin has changed. I've had like hormonal stuff going on. That's fine. This stuff I did a review on. My face looked wet. And I am not an oily, oily person. You know, I'm like average, I would say, on the oily scale. This thing made me look like a disco ball all day. Absolutely hated it. I wore it one other time besides that video with like a mattifying primer and a powder on top to see if maybe I could like make it work for me. Not good. If you have like the driest skin on earth, you may love this. Like if you have skin that needs that moisturiz moisturization, try this out. Otherwise, steer clear. All right, now I'm going to talk about some e.l.f. products. This is one of the ones that I own, but I do own several, so this is going to apply to all of them. People are always talking about the contouring blush and bronzing powders from e.l.f. Now, I understand that they've recently come out with some matte blushes that are um, maybe not. This is the one in Turks and Caicos, which is a more neutral palette. It's not, like, bright. They still have little shimmers in them, like glitter. So while the product itself is a nice quality, they are not for me. People rave about them. They're only $3. They're so good. They're so pigmented. They last so long on your skin. Yeah, but I don't want to look like a child. I don't want to wear glitter on my cheeks anymore. Unless it's for like a special occasion. So I keep them because I keep thinking, well, this one's like a neutral color at least. It's not like hot pink or orange or anything. It could be pulled off, but... I just really don't think that these are something that I need in my life. So, unfortunately, I would not recommend them. And I do regret having like six of them or wh however many color combos they have. I have them all. Here's another product that I might get some hate for. This is the Urban Decay Afterglow 8 Hour Blush. This one's in Bang, but this product is too pigmented. I want you to watch. My finger's clean, okay? Watch me. I just did one swipe. Just go one time. Look at, let me try it. There you go. Look at how pigmented that is. I'm going to watch again. My middle finger is clean. One swipe. I cannot wear these blushes. Like, they are just too pigmented. No. Not good. Everyone else seems to think they're like amazing. A lot of uh, beauty bloggers got sent like a PR package with many of the colors in them. And they talk about the neutral one. And for me, they're just too pigmented. I've tried some, like three of the other shades I've gotten samples of, like on the cards with different shades. And they're just overly pigmented. It's unnecessary. Unless you have like the darkest skin, you really don't need a blush that's that pigmented. As a matter of fact, I prefer blushes that are sheer because I can build them up to pigmented. But I can never like get them to blend out the way I want when they're too pigmented. Another cheek product. This is a ColourPop blush. This is ColourPop, ColourPop Super Shock Cheek. I've tried a few of their blushes. They're like a cream to powder formula. I just don't love these blushes. I don't mind a cream blush and I don't mind uh, a powder blush. This cream to powder formula just doesn't work for me. I don't like that I have to apply it with my fingers. I don't feel like it applies well and like blends out the way I want it to. I don't like the ColourPop cheek products. I don't know. I just don't. I love their lid shades that I apply with my finger to adjust the eyelid for shimmer. Love them. Do not like their, their blushes. Okay, two last products. We'll wrap this up. One of them is a surprise for some people. This is a MAC lip liner. This one happens to be in the shade Beet, B-E-E-T. It's like a berry color or reddish kind of color. I don't like these. This is a color that I like and I would wear, but it is so dry. It pulls on my lips. It's like I'm using a, a regular pencil on my lips. Like it is not creamy. It is not moisturizing. It does not feel good. I cringe at the thought when I go, oh, this is the only lip liner I have that matches this lipstick and I really need to wear a lip liner and I have to pull for this one. I have a few different ones, but I'm like, ugh, I really don't want to wear it. So I may mac, like back to MAC all my MAC lip liners. I know that their other formula isn't as dry, like the ones that are um, the Pro line, I think, 
but no bueno. Last but not least, I have a Milani Amore Matte Lip Cream. I do not like these. I have a few shades. This one is in the shade Lust. I just pulled out one to show you. It's a nice, pretty mauve color. You probably be like, oh, that looks so pretty. Yeah, it does, except when it's on my lips. When it's on my lips, it looks like a milky, but not creamy, chalk stick. Like, went onto my lips. There is no hydration. It doesn't apply nicely. It's sticky for a while, and then it just goes completely dry, and I feel like I need to, like, put something on. Like, I can't do it. It's not even just, like, I don't prefer it. It's, like... I can't wear these out of the house. I just, I won't make it. I keep them because I keep thinking I'm going to do like a products I regret buying video. I hate them. Just putting that out there. Okay, so those are the products that I feel like everyone else has loved and talks about and I just don't like. I hope you guys go check out the channels I list below for ladies who collaborated with me on this video. Thanks for watching. Bye.